What's going on everyone? Uh, today we've got a really great video for you. You know, we realized we've made a lot of videos about dieting, losing weight, and the micro factors behind it, but we haven't laid it out. You know, these are the five things we thoroughly believe are super important to achieving, you know, any weight loss in an intelligent and effective way. Uh, what's tip number one? Tip number one is you've got to be working out. Now, before I jump into this, I wanted to just let you know, we have in the title, losing fat fast. Now, I highly recommend creating an approach that's super sustainable and gonna let you progress and succeed in the long run. A lot of people are searching on Google how to lose fat fast which is why it's in the title but I highly recommend finding an approach that's gonna help you stick to it and not just lose 10 pounds in one week crash diet and all that stuff so number one you've got to be having the, um, the actual resistance training down a lot of times people think they can just cut their calories they can move a lot and then they lose 10 to 20 pounds they look in the mirror and they're like why do I look horrible and why am I still unhappy you've got to be resistance training at least three times a week you've got to be doing the compounds like the squats the deadlifts the bench press and your goal should be to maintain as much much muscle mass as possible so when you lose that fat you still are very happy with how you look yeah and you can absolutely lose a ton of weight without strength training I see it all the time for instance runners people that just die hard fasting all those things but the negative there is you're not actively working on strengthening your muscles and improving your lean body composition so that's what's gonna present these roundings you know arms give you that muscle health whereas when you're just running you know you are getting a little bit of stimulus on those legs but you're not effectively toning and working every area individually to strengthen it and really maintain that lean muscle as you diet down yeah and just to add on to that cardio is a fantastic tool but it definitely isn't absolutely needed so you have you have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose the weight we're going to talk, in a, talk about this a little bit afterwards and cardio is a great tool to just basically allow you to eat slightly more and be in a little bit more of a deficit but I wouldn't recommend going absolutely balls to the wall on something like this because you're gonna feel hungrier you're gonna to want to overeat but it used correctly it is a great tool uh, to help you lose fat faster and we're gonna put a little star on that thing um, so a lot of people where they get confused and you'll actively see you know with a lot of elder or not elder older women is a lot of them try to compensate with movement you know they'll be doing everything you know the classes workouts nailing it all picking up the kids being active and they'll kind of starve themselves out as they do it so be careful with how much you do move it is a solution and you should be as active as possible but there is a point where it's a tipping point you're overdoing it you're going to stress your body more than its benefit but that is very very rare and of course as long as you're getting an adequate amount of calories um, you shouldn't be too necessarily worried about that but listen to your body you know if you're super sore you're super excited it, maybe take that rest day don't be afraid to rest what's number two number two is just overall uh, focusing on your nutrition so we can just have a bunch of different brackets in here um, the biggest thing I would say is definitely maintaining a proper calorie intake so like I said you have to be in a calorie deficit and this is gonna vary for every single individual you can't just search online um, someone's like diet plan and just start following those calories because it's not gonna work for you so number one step is just kind of figuring out um, you know us as coaches we've worked with hundreds of individuals just to help them figure out where where their maintenance is, where their uh, surplus is and their deficit. So that's the first thing you have to figure out is how can I create a calorie deficit within my week? Um, anything you want to add on there? Yeah, so once again, going back to my earlier point, a lot of people just think to lose weight, I'm gonna starve myself. I'm gonna do as much volume as possible, right? So you're gonna decrease your food and you're gonna increase your volume and ramp it up. But at a certain point, there's a trade-off, right? If your body feels very suppressed, it's overextended, you know, you're actively burning a ton of calories and you're not giving it the adequate amount of food to support itself, um, it's gonna to start to kind of wanna suppress itself and suppress hormones and, you know, prevent these factors. That's why even with a lot of people that will come, they're actually eating too little. You know, they're starting themselves out, they're eating four or 500 calories a day. And then maybe once a week, you know, Friday night, they're going out going crazy. So if you're eating too little start by eating an adequate amount you know to find your maintenance just find a level of food where you can eat where you're satisfied you know you shouldn't be starving you shouldn't be full you should be satisfied with each meal and at the end of the day you should or sorry in each morning when you weigh in yourself first thing in the morning after going to the bathroom in minimal clothing that weight should be pretty even and at that point you can say I've established my maintenance and that's where you work off and eventually start to cut and taper away from that um, there are more nuances to this but at its core that's the base of how it's done yeah and a couple other things we focus on for coaching is just making Making sure everyone's getting an adequate amount of protein um, so you know just a lot of times people will focus on calories but then they'll have 20 grams of protein and five grams of fiber and realistically that's just not going to be setting you up for long-term success you're gonna be super hungry you're not gonna be able to help with the muscle building um, or maintenance that you should be doing a couple other things that we highly recommend people paying attention to is just overall veggie intake 
Like, you know, you always grow up and you're hurt, uh, you're told you should be having six to seven or eight servings of veggies a day. And this is just huge because it's gonna satiate you. So kind of bracketing off into the whole calorie thing, you gotta wanna, you have to basically find foods that satiate you within the day. I love stuff like sparkling water, just things that are like super high in volume that aren't a hundred calories, like a thousand calories that kind of give you a lot of benefits like nutrients and stuff like that. And you'll be set up for long-term success with this, uh, this tip. Exactly, so definitely within your diet, you wanna be intelligent with what you're consuming, as Kyle said. So to elaborate on this point of satiation, um, if I have a Big Mac, you know, that's like eight or 900 calories, whatever it is, and I could easily smash four of those guys. You know, it's small, getting a lot of oil, um, you know, a lot of those kind of foods where it's not really dense. Whereas I would try to eat 800 calories of kale and chicken, I feel like my stomach would pop from all that fiber, you know, all those micronutrients, it's really gonna fill you up so you get a little more bang for your buck. So that is something to be mindful of because if you wanna have a successful diet, you can't be starving all the time. So if you're eating a lot of sugary foods, a lot of really foods high in saturated fats, it's not gonna fill you as much and it will make dieting harder. So if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button. If we get 200 likes, we'll make an additional part two on other external factors that you may be thinking about or asking questions about like why water, supplement, meal timing, different types of Keto, meals. Keto, intermittent yeah. fasting, all these million different things. We can do like a more micro video now that we've kind of covered the themes. Yeah. Number three, and this is the one, you know, most people neglect, a lot of people, they just say, well, just burn more than you're eating and that's it. But uh, it goes a lot past that. You have to monitor your mental health, your mental state, and all those benefits there. We're gonna get into that a little bit more in the next one with lifestyle factors. But even things that will kind of inhibit your success are things like stress. So for instance, every time I did an exam, I would, or I would have exams for school, I'd get super stressed out, you know, kind of overworked and overextended, and I'd end up getting sick, I'd have a bad workout, all these things. When you're stressed, you know, you are getting a lot of cortisol, not that cortisol is inherently bad, but in this case it is cortisol from stress. You know, you will get some of this from training and it's not necessarily the worst thing. Uh, that's a whole nother video. Um, but in terms of stress, you know, you want to kind of get away from that. And when you're stressed, you know, that can cause other psychological factors like the need to stress eat, you know, the need to, you know, be self-destructive and all these things. So it's super important you take care of yourself mentally. And one of the ways that a lot of people don't talk about in terms of diet is by being reasonable within yourself. So for me, when I diet and for my clients, I really recommend the 80-20 approach. So a lot of people come to me, they say, make me a meal plan. And I say, I'd rather not. Because here's the thing, I make you a meal plan, I hate fish, I never eat fish. Turns out Kyle loves eating fish. Fish is his favorite food. And I say, Kyle, you can only eat chicken and broccoli, beef, and onion, and he hates onion. And then he's like, oh, this meal plan sucks, this and that. You know, he goes to his favorite sushi place because he loves sushi on Friday. And he goes, I don't want to bring the, this meal prep. And then he goes, boom, completely deviates away from it, right? So with this 80-20 approach, when you're logging your own foods, looking at calories first, protein second, fats, carbs third, and then kind of meal time and everything else goes beneath that, he has more freedom to succeed. So he can still fit that sushi in. He'll say, hey, I'm going out for sushi tonight. You know, I want to have a good time. I'm going to eat my high protein, my vegetables during, for breakfast and lunch, you know, maybe I'll have a high protein smoothie, and then I'll have vegetables and chicken for lunch, really low density foods, you can still fit this into his lifestyle. And then mentally he has that freedom where he's not beating himself up, yeah. where he deviates off his meal plan, he goes, I suck, I'm so bad, I'm never gonna die, I'm never gonna lose weight. Cause that really takes a toll on you. Whereas when you feel control and you still feel enabled, to have fun, like even me, like lately I've been loving these Reese's Pieces Big Cups, they're super good, but they're 200 calories a pop, right? So that's pretty much like all my fun food for the day. So in a different world, I'd be like, I can only ever eat clean foods. Purely, you know, I would just feel restricted and one day I'd go off the rails and I'd probably eat 30 of those things. So instead I say, hey, I'm gonna fit 200 to 400 calories in there out of my 3,500 calorie allowance, you know, that's completely within my, mechan uh, my means and that can limit my stress and make me feel more control and happy. And, Another big thing is accept you're gonna have bad days, you know? Diets, you can't be perfect, we're all human. You know, we strive for perfection, but we don't necessarily always achieve it. I know I don't. You have a bad day, put it behind you, move forward. Like, it's so important. So many people dwell on the bad things they've done or the failures they've had in the past with the diet. Let it be a new day, let each day be a new thing, let each week be a new week. This is something we really push on our coaching. We look at it in these factors. And then, sorry to add one more thing. I don't yeah, no problem. Him. Last one is, um, you know, for me too, like if you want to deviate from your diet, like a good example is you're meeting up with a friend that you haven't seen in six years, you know, you've always got burgers with the friend and that was like the thing you did, you know, and you don't, you're like, oh, I want to see this friend. Now, will I say you can never do that? You have to be 100% to your diet? No, because if you want to see that friend or be successful in that measure, 
all you really need to say is, is it worth, like you can do those things to prep and minimize the damage. And maybe I'll say, hey, in summer 35, I'll go to 42 or 45, no, I'll be about in a thousand surplus, and I'm okay with that. Maybe it'll put me four days to a week behind my diet, um, but that's no big deal. It's worth the emotional experience, then you can give yourself the freedom to enjoy these benefits. Yeah, and I uh, couldn't agree with everything Josh just said there. I'm just gonna quickly expand on this uh, slightly. Uh, but basically, if you think about your given day, if you have kids, if you have all this stuff, and you're stressed when you wake up, and then you go to work for a job that's eight to nine hours, and you're stressed, and then when you go home, you're just thinking about this crazy restrictive diet that you can't follow, and how you can't have the foods that you enjoy, that's gonna be adding another couple hours of stress. And then you go to the gym, and you have a three hour workout plan, because your coach doesn't know anything about you, that's more stress, and then at the end of the day, your body's gonna be more stressed, uh, your insulin levels are gonna rise, which is gonna store more fat, and you're just gonna crave sugary, crappy foods. If you can minimize the stress on your journey and set a realistic approach, I guarantee you will succeed. So that's just the biggest thing here uh, that we want to get across to you guys. And that's the one no one pays attention yeah. to. Yeah, so. so if I that's, find someone that like, we took a while on. yeah, that basically has like their calorie deficit set and then they're working out a decent amount, um, this is probably the biggest thing aside from sleep, which we'll jump into after, that most people don't realize. And I think the biggest issue here is that they think they have to go all out and they're constantly stressed within the day. Um, and it might just be an unrealistic routine or unrealistic amount of calories or just a game plan. So, I, you know, the biggest thing we want to get across is make it fit your lifestyle so that way, even on your worst days, you can still stay on track and succeed. Now, this is a lot of information we know because it is, but it's super important information. So, you know, to absorb it, I recommend watching this video probably at least twice. Um, you will get a lot of it, and at the end of the day, these tips might not necessarily be sexy, but they're effective. We've done this with hundreds and hundreds of people now. Our success rate is well above 90%, and we're very proud to admit that. Um, so, you know, if this is overwhelming and you've made it this far in the video, chances are you're a committer, um, and you've probably failed doing this before. So we'd love to help you succeed. Uh, you know, if you don't know, we run an online coaching business that is the core of our business. So essentially it's personal training online. So we manage everything from your nutrition, your workouts, to monitoring these lifestyle factors. You'll get unlimited tech support from me and Kyle. You can reach them whenever. And a lot of people say, are you two the ones actually doing the coaching? And that is absolutely correct. Got to work with myself or Kyle. Um, we've worked with people in all spectrums of life, highly advanced, brand new, um, you know, sports, athletes, everything you can ever imagine. Um, and we'd love to help you succeed with your weight loss. So if you definitely, um, well, you should definitely take advantage of that. Just click that first link in the description down below. It'll take you to our page to find out more. Shoot us a message and just include this video in the subject line and we'll hook you up with a really special deal. So, uh, you know, the first few people to take advantage of that will take care of you and we'd love to be the ones to help you finally succeed. But what's number four for everyone else? Number four is lifestyle and recovery. Now, this one is absolutely huge. I'm just gonna talk about sleep because this is something that a lot of people just don't take into consideration. So they have the first three things down, but then they're sleeping three hours or, uh, three hours a night. Now, this is gonna be absolutely horrible. A lot of times people come to us and they say, hey, what supplement can I take? But then they're like not getting enough sleep, they're not getting enough recovery, and they're just beating themselves up every single day, which is in turn gonna cause more stress if you're getting uh, not enough sleep. Um, a lot of times people will just wake up and then the first thing when they have very little sleep is they're gonna crave a sugary, fatty food and their entire day is just gonna be messed up resulting in more stress. I saw that little boob dance there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's something that a lot of people, I would say like, you know, a lot of our clients, we've been having them set like sleep goals, just in terms of how much you're actually sleeping, because it, in my opinion, it's a, the best supplement and the best recovery mechanism. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, these factors are pretty limitless. Um, so, you know, optimize recovery. A lot of people say, hey, how can I be less sore? How can I be ready to go on the next day? You know, keep that frequency, maintain a consistent gym schedule is number one. You know, make sure you're getting enough protein in your diet. Um, you know, you're eating good foods that are gonna fill you up and, you know, really help um, benefit you as opposed to take away from you. You know, like if I just pour a bucket of grease down my throat, that's not gonna strengthen me and it's not gonna help me feel powerful, right? You know, so you wanna consume things that will actually help you feel strong, ready to hit those workouts. You know, you can do things like um, trigger point uh, work, like things with the hypervolt, Theragun, uh, you can stretch, uh, you know, science there is kind of shaky, uh, but you can do whatever you like, foam rolling, whatever makes you feel better, even think benefits placebo, but big sleep is number one, what's number five? And then number five would just be uh, the additional factors. Um, so first thing we're gonna talk about is just adding in like diet breaks as well as refeeds. Now we have made a full video, so it's gonna be probably the second link in the description down below, but if you kind of reach the point where you're nailing these four things and you're like, okay, I just need something a bit different, um, I'll let Josh expand on this because he's played around with 
with them um, quite often for a lot of clients. Yeah, so once again, dieting is not linear. Um, in a perfect world, you would just lose weight consistently just with little baby jobs and macros. Um, but there's been a lot of science lately to show the benefits of things like diet breaks, intermittent caloric restriction, carb refeeds, and these are all advanced tools you can use. Uh, but the number one for Gen Pop is diet breaks. Unless you're competing, I wouldn't really concern yourself with refeeds and things of that measure. Um, it's more for physique competitors, but uh, diet breaks essentially, you know, you can take your diet break every, I recommend four to six weeks. Um, some people do them more frequently every two weeks, but I find that's a little uh, negative. So I like to do every four to six weeks, take that diet break for two weeks. So essentially as my calories go down, you know, I'm at 3,500, let's say I start at 3K to see if I get a drop. I keep getting a drop, keep getting a drop. And I never really have my, I know myself super well. So I get to, let's say I get to a sticky point where I can't lose weight. Sometimes the best thing to do is do this diet break. So I push myself up to my maintenance. Now the problem is my maintenance will be different than my starting maintenance, obviously, because I'm going to be at a new body fat percentage and a new weight. Uh, so that kind of gets a little tricky, but it's not too bad. And the goal of this is by resetting everything, you're kind of resetting all your functions. You're optimizing those hormones again. Um, you know, you're getting a lot of leptin pumping in the system. You know, you're going to improve T3. You're going to improve thyroid function. All these things that will help accelerate weight loss because if you neglect these things and they come right down it can make you way too hungry and it can minimize how much fat you're burning so you can do these nifty little tricks to trick the body into thinking oh all is well you know whatever and then boom you cut it down again and so these are some more advanced tools and it's hard to implement on yourself um, especially to do it you know without being subjective because with yourself you're like oh, I'm starving I need a refeed or yeah. I need a, a diet break when chances are you probably don't so that's why it's great to you know have us looking over it um, we've done this with hundreds and hundreds of people you will succeed Anyone who follows the measures and the very simple uh, measures to follow, we've made it very easy. Um, it's not gonna take more than two to three minutes of your day. Uh, we do a bi-weekly check-in, so we do a check-in every Thursday and every Saturday. So everything about our coaching is a tier above. So we definitely recommend you check that out. First link in the description down below. Once again, I do definitely recommend watching this twice. Uh, really take in everything that's said. If you have any questions, comment down below. We'll be happy to answer them. Uh, check out the coaching, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.